tonight's program, we find out about the Homestay Network with co-founder Julie Charity and Homestay operator Althea Oldmer, and we take a look back at 30 years in operation with Skyline Marketing Manager Dave Blackmore. City News on Tibi Rotorua is proudly brought to you by Trade Central. Everybody. Welcome back to City News. We have a beautiful view of Rotorua here in an amazing house that has been warmly opened for homestays. Now what has that got to do with news? Actually it has a lot. Standing next to me is Julia Charity. You may not have met her before but I can tell you that this lady has raised the GDP of the country. Um, tell me Julia, what do you do? Um, I'm, um, I founded New Zealand's Homestay Network. It's a really simple concept and it embraces the, um, the number one standing in the world that New Zealand has for how welcoming, we, how welcoming we are for tourists. It's really simple. It's an online marketplace where guests can come and stay with hosts, a bit like this, in a home environment. It can be a self-contained unit, a homestay or a bed and breakfast. And how successful has it been? We're now the largest and fastest growing homestay network in New Zealand. We had very humble beginnings here in Rotorua, but we're now nationwide and we have over two, 270 hosts and, homes, and about 520 rooms all over the country. Now you haven't raised the GDP just by inviting guests to come and stay in beautiful places. You have been able to reach out to massive international networks and some extraordinarily th some extraordinary things have happened. I'm going to let you explain what they are. Okay, so because of our connections with Tourism New Zealand, we were invited to be part of a TV show. Um, there were actually two TV shows. The first went to air in Korea, and the foundation for the show is about celebrity fathers, so five celebrity fathers and their five celebrity children every week undertake a new challenge. And at the end of the season, um, the five celebrity fathers came to New Zealand and they stayed with homestay families. The Korean version of the show was so successful and it went out to 20 million viewers um, and actually I ended up uh, with my daughter and my partner being filmed in the show and on the other side of the camera which was really entertaining. Apparently my daughter's famous in Korea. Oh, how gorgeous, <laughs> how gorgeous. Yeah. Um, and with the success of that show um, I kind of candidly and rather cheekily invited the Korean producer to talk to the Chinese Chinese producer because there's a sister show in China with the Chinese celebrities and I said oh perhaps we should get them to come out to New Zealand. So um, what happened is that the Chinese did indeed get in touch with Tourism New Zealand um, and it was a jointly funded project by Tourism New Zealand and Air New Zealand and they invited some of the regional tourism offices like Destination Rotorua Marketing, uh, Hamilton Waikato Tourism Regional Office to put together proposals about how if the Chinese celebrities came to New Zealand, how we would look after them and how we would um, you know, make sure the children were sa you know, safe and had a great time. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. Tell me what it was like to get that phone call that the Chinese were on their way. Well, um, to be honest, Oh, it, it was amazing. I mean, I think I was involved from the, you know, the early inception of the idea. Um, certainly, I worked really hard with Tourism New Zealand to put all the proposals together. Um, at that time, we were also scoping out Canterbury, so I was including homestay properties that um, the Chinese celebrities could stay at in Christchurch. Um, but I was absolutely thrilled when I heard that um, it was a tight competition between Australia, um, Queensland and um, Rotorua in New Zealand. I knew we were in mm -hmm. for the running. Mm -hmm. um, I also knew that when we did the director's recce, we had taken them to places that epitomise Rotorua. Mm -hmm. We exposed them to Māori culture, uh, geothermal activity and of course our beautiful lakes. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes really special viewing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now there are some pretty astounding statistics that have come off the back of this project. Mm. The amount of people that mentioned it on social uh, social networks, 
that set a world record. Can you let us know what that was? I think um, we were lucky. I mean, this TV show is extraordinarily popular in New Zealand. uh, And... um, and being in the season finale, it was watched by 404 million people viewed on TV in China. But then what happened is it went out to global satellites. So that meant that other Mandarin-speaking countries like um, um, Taiwan, Hong, Hong Kong, Singapore, um, all the Asian countries were able to view it by global satellite and that reached 1.4 billion people. Um, And then um, we set a new global world record with the number of mentions on social media. It's a big number. Um, 20 billion people mentioned this on uh, Sina Weibo, which is like Chinese Facebook. So it was extraordinarily popular. Absolutely. And that's where I say that this lady has helped the economy of the country because that um, kind of exposure, what would that be worth in monetary terms? Well, um, I think if you, you know, in two dimensions, First, if we look at the um, the PR ad value, if New Zealand was to pay for an equivalent advertising campaign to encourage Chinese to come and stay in New Zealand homestays, then um, they've estimated it would be close to 169 million. Um, the chair, sorry, the CEO of Tourism New Zealand, Kevin Bowler, has described this as being the entire budget for Tourism New Zealand. So this um, has set a new PR media um, record for New Zealand and it's unprecedented really and I think that kind of exposure is really unmissable. Mm. Um, Congratulations. Well, thank you. Well um, you know, personally I'm really humbled to have been the project coordinator for this. It was an extraordinarily busy time. There were some 500 people involved. We had all the homestay families. We had two film um, companies. We had two languages. Um, 210 people flew out from China just for the, for the filming of these five celebrity families. Um, and of course the tourism offices, um, the regional offices and also the operators have all been superb to work with. What an experience. Now we're actually standing in one of the homes that is very, as I said, warmly opened. So perhaps we could call our um, our host over to come and have a little chat with us. Certainly. I'll All introduce right. you to Althea. Thank you. Welcome back. Now we're joined now by this beautiful host. Can I get you to introduce her and we'll get to meet her. Yeah. Hi, um, this is Althea. Um, she lives in Rotorua and she's been hosting for Look After Me and um, does a beautiful job in welcoming both international guests and uh, New Zealanders. So mm-hmm. yeah, we specialise in you know lots of different types of accommodation, mm-hmm. particularly in Rotorua, coming here for the new cycle trails or events or um, or for business. So mm-hmm. and why yeah. wouldn't you want to come to Rotorua? Rotorua. Hello, thank Hi. you so much for having us in your home. Can you tell me a little bit about what it's like to to host for Look After Me? Well, it's exciting, really. Um, you meet such wonderful people from all around the world, and I guess we sort of had an experience ourselves and worked overseas for a while. So, coming back home here to have a place like Rotorua and just to let other people experience that, we realised how much there was here, mm. and we like having people in our home and looking after them. Mm. What is the, what is some of the feedback from the people who do come to a homestay, as opposed to going into just your normal? average accommodation? (laughs) I think what they like most is the fact that the hosts can tell them so much about the place, about the city that they're in, where to go, what to do, whereas I was just telling one of the other girls that sometimes in a hotel it's fabulous, the staff are amazing, but they sometimes don't have time, whereas the hosts have time, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, you can send them off onto your little favourite places, my husband's a mountain bike rider, so yeah, he can show them all the good tracks. I think it, it's just a far more authentic experience, isn't it, in a homestay, would you, would you agree? Yeah, I think that um, 
people are looking for experiential memories um, and actually it's the small touches that make a difference. It is knowing that you can go out to the secret spot and have a lovely free hot pool mm. and that's the sort of thing that people remember. Mm. Um, we had this one gentleman, um, he exclusively only stays in Hilton hotels whenever he travels the world. Um, when he came to New Zealand, he actually booked his whole holiday through Look After Me and he said that um, his most, one of the most enjoyable experiences was, was spending uh, $35 a night staying in a Buddhist monastery in Northland. And he said um, the spirituality around that place um, you know, really surprised him and it's, you know, he was so used to five class hotels and to spend, you know, so little in monetary terms but to gain so much as a person I think was amazing and he just booked his whole holiday mm -hmm. through um, Look After Me. Well that is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Just finally now we, we, we're um, coming to the end but what is your hope for the future and uh, with what has happened with this amazing connection in China and also to with Look After Me? Um, I think uh, when I started this business I was, you know, started fairly, fairly small but I always had a big vision um, and what seemed to have happened is there is now apparently a global, they're calling it a global hospitality revolution and these homestay networks have sprung up all over the world so there is a really big one in America. Um, we are working very closely with the biggest um, homestay network in Europe and we're looking at forming a code share um, relationship and I would think that um, that this style of accommodation be, you know, becomes increasingly more legitimate as a, um, a valued contribution to the tourism industry. Um, yeah, I, I think that um, because of our involvement in China, um, we will certainly be looking to partner with the big Chinese um, homestay network. They just had the good fortune to secure $100 million of investment, so they're certainly very serious about growing that, that type of accommodation, and that's just in the last few weeks. I don't know if it had anything to do with the popularity of um, the TV show. Um, I don't know the internal politics of China, but they're certainly, um, I would certainly be start to initiate a reciprocal kind of agreement that when Chinese come to New Zealand, they stay in our homestay network, and when New Zealanders go to China, that they can stay in, in their homestay network. And we know that the, um, all of the properties have been vetted, that quality is there, and um, it's really about exchanging you know, cultural values and um, developing relationships. Mm. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much Julie. Mm -hmm. Thank you Anthea Thank you. for your contribution mm -hmm. and go you good thing go. Mm -hmm. <laughs>